Today I have a simple numbered birthday card idea to share with you using a few current favorite supplies from Simon Says Stamp. My card is one for the 25th birthday, but you can change the number to be anything you need. Hi everyone, I'm Yana Smakula and I'm hoping you love this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell too to be notified of every new upload. One of the key ingredients for this project is the coordinating die set for the birthday numbers stamp set. I'm using just the dies today and actually skipping stamping the numbers all together. Having dies, you can create all sorts of looks, and the look I'm going for today is actually negative die cutting. My idea is to die cut 25 in a panel that will become the front of my card. Once I've positioned the dies on the panel the way I want it, just centered, I tape them in place using micropore tape so that they would not move as I send them through my die cutting machine. I've recently switched to a new machine, Deep Sea Die Cutter by Jane Downford from Spellbinders, but I still have it sitting off to the side on another desk, so that's why I'm not showing it on video. Once the die cutting is done, I'm keeping the negative panel for my card, and I'm going to set the positive die cut numbers with my stamp set and the die set to use in the future. I want to add some interest to my background panel, and I'm going to do this with the help of heat embossing. Here I have a rose lettuce background stamp, and I'm going to heat emboss it using white satin pearl embossing powder from Hero Arts to have a tone on tone look. It's not going to show much on the card because it's white on white, but it is going to give it a nice touch. Alternatively, you can opt to use specialty paper for the front panel of your card, like maybe wood grain cardstock. I actually wanted to use wood grain cardstock, but I ran out. You can also use something like a texture plate to add some dry embossing or texture detail to the card front. Just, you know, just something to make it less stark white. After doing all of the usual heat embossing preparations, I coated this panel with embossing powder and of course I heat set it with my heat tool. I want to decorate the number openings or the positive number space with flowers to make it look like as of the numbers are blooming. And to do this, I'm using floral images from the Moments of Grace stamp set. It's a, such a timeless and unique set. And even though it has a lot of sentiments for sympathy cards, I often find myself using it for other occasion projects. I didn't want to stamp flowers in black ink, so I opted for heat embossing here once again. I treated paper with an anti-static powder, I inked stamps with clear embossing ink, I stamped them and covered them with Simon Says Stamp and Tingold embossing powder. After heat setting it with my heat tool, I cut the images out with the help of coordinating dies and moved on to coloring. I always aim for simple and easy to copy designs, so I try to keep my cards fairly easy to make. To make sure I had enough images, I played a bit with the image placement inside the 25 negative opening. And once I was happy with how everything looked, I took a photo with my phone just so that I could remember this arrangement and recreate it once I colored the images. I used a little bit different color combo today, starting with pale violets and greens and a little bit of pink. I used BV000, BV00, and BV11 markers and did simple coloring on some of the flowers, keeping the flower centers darkest and the tips of the petals lightest. I also used pale pinks and went with the RV23, RV11, and RV10 colors for the other flowers for this card. Same here, I kept the flower centers darkest and tips of the petals lightest. For the greens, I used G99, G94, and YG03 markers. Once my coloring was finished, I pulled up the photo on my phone, the photo of the arrangement, and I started recreating the floral arrangement now with the colored flowers. I'm really glad that I took the photo and had it as a guide because had I not done it, it would have took me forever to plan the image placement all over again. So here's a tip for you. If you've arranged something once, snap a photo and use it as a guide. 
once I had everything positioned, I used low tech tape and taped over the image so that I could pick up the entire panel and foam mount it onto my card base without disturbing the image placement. Before I did that, I also wanted to add some ink blending to the background as I wanted some color to show through the die cut opening behind the flowers. I used Velvet Orchid in deep purple ink colors from Sam and Sestia and blended a little bit of color in the center of the card base. I actually think I overdid it slightly and kind of spent too much time doing it as honestly, in the end, only a fraction of that ink blended background was showing on the finished card. So don't overdo it and just add a little bit of color. Having done that, I also colored a piece of scrap white paper with a violet marker, making colored cardstock for a future sentiment strip. After it was dry, I just white heat embossed a simple sentiment over it. I used foam adhesive tape and foam mounted the negative die cut panel onto my card base. I also used foam adhesive squares cut into narrow strips here to add support to the tiny areas of the panel. Once it was in place, I used both foam adhesive and glue and adhered all of the floral elements in place. Finally, I added that Let's Celebrate sentiment. It actually comes from the birthday numbers stamp set from Simon Says Stamp, where I used the coordinating dies from. I foam mounted it onto the card and embellished the project with a tiny enamel heart. I also stamped a few hearts in dark purple ink here and there, scattering them around the panel. I hope you'll give this idea a try using these or other stamps and dies from your stash. If you do, remember to share online and tag us on social media. We always love seeing what you guys are making. On the screen, there's a link to a playlist with all of my videos featuring Simon Says Stamp stamps. Subscribe now not to miss any new card making tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with more Simon Says Stamp tutorials in April. Bye!